on the third run we made 51.78 right in the realm of, of a very healthy stock machine and what I like best about this let's look at the AFR is this thing solid here, let's, let's pull it up here. Air fuel's dialed. What do you have for jets in here right now? Uh, 55 pilot, 170 main. It's on the third clip on the needle, stock needle. Power curve, money. Super crisp. Check it out, boys. My brother, Andrew Baccarosa, came a couple hours this morning from Southwest Connecticut to show us his 97 CR500 that's been completely built for desert endurance racing. I'm gonna let Andrew take it away, but this has been in the works for a long time and he's prepping for a big event later this year. What's the scoop of this thing, Andrew? All right, so this is my 97 CR500, like Kenny said. Uh, I think my pops and I picked it up about five, six years ago from some hill, hillbilly underneath the GW bridge uh, during an ice storm. So. I took it home from there and uh, it had some really nasty looking black plastics on it and some dragon seat cover or whatever and basically just stripped it down. Didn't take it down to the frame that time, but I uh, just did plastics graphics and uh, I think I put the A60s on it, placed those up to the stock hub. And then uh, rode it here and there, but it mostly sat just tucked away in the back of my shop. I race NESC uh, pro class around here locally. so. This isn't really a bike you want to be racing Southwick or any of those on, right. if you have a brand new 450. Right, but you've always had the, the side bikes. Guys, a Andrew's had brand new 07 CR250s and he's an RM250 guy and, and lots of old two strokes and always riding interesting shit. I know we have some video of you riding the aluminum frame CR125 at the vintage mm -hmm. uh, Supercross in Daytona, which was yeah, super absolutely. sick watching you scream around in that thing. But so th th this build's always been sort of uh, in the background here. Yeah, this one's always been like, like if I have a little bit of off time, I'll tinker with it, maybe buy a few parts here, buy a few parts there. Um, I think the last time I really built it up was when, when you guys did the 500 shootout, I think back in 2019 at Southwick. I think I took it in, put some new tires on it and uh, just freshened it up. But I never touched the motor. The motor was always bone stock. So that always uh, was cool, but worrisome at the same time, you know, considering that um, we do ring them out a bit more than the average rider does. So. Uh, after that, I decided to maybe do a frame off, so pulled the motor out, uh, pulled the top end off, and when I pulled it off, I found out the OEM piston was cracked from the bottom of the skirt all the way to the top. So uh, that only meant we had about five to ten more minutes of ride time until she exploded. You lucked out there. Yeah, lucked out uh, significantly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I sent this cylinder out to Millennium. They replated it, stock bore. Uh, I think they cut the head a little bit to run race gas. Um, it's not the prettiest bike, honestly, but it, it gets ridden. So that's what I will say on that behalf. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I checked the crank, no side to side, no up and down, it was tight. So I just left the crank back in there, cleaned everything up, put an OEM clutch in it, and then just put it back together. I didn't even powder coat the frame. I'm gonna be honest with you. How's the um, porting? Porting stock. It's everything in the motor is bone stock besides the pipe you see and the reeds. I run C12 in it and uh, mix it 40 to one with Maxima K2. But um, so what are you what are you building the bike for now? What's on the horizon? Tell us about that. So basically, I've always had the idea of doing crazy shit and that <laughs> that is expanded to wanting to do a desert race. But, you know, why do a desert race if you, you know, don't want to get noticed? So we have a four guy team. It's sort of in the works, like I'd say about 80 percent in the works. We're going to try to do the Vegas Torino this year. It's a. Uh, right around 550 miles. And uh, so far we have Josh Pryor who's in on it and uh, Ty Gagnon, he runs Tech Graphics out of uh, Eastern Connecticut. And uh, we've got BA suspension, he's on, the, uh, he's on the cusp. I know Billy's a bit of a free spirit. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're kind of uh, hoping he tags in but prepared to maybe have someone else take his spot. But as of now, we, uh, we got a good crew and uh, a few so, people do chasing for us. All of you guys have your pro cards. That may actually be a, a very competitive team, especially if this bike is, is set up and, and, and proven. Yeah, and that's, that's what I wanted to talk about next too, honestly. I mean, I just had this bike out in Cali for the past month and I did a lot of testing with gearing. Um, obviously you can see it's got a brand new recluse in it. I mean, that, that alone with a, a new cable and a nice perch and stuff is 
significantly nicer than a stock clutch. You put the torque drive recluse in it, right? Yeah, that's all they sell for it, but I'd almost rather run that anyways because you still have a, a normal feel of a clutch. It just, it puts more torque to the ground, if that makes any sense. There's right, it doesn't zero slip slippage. at all. No, no slippage. I love mine. Andrew, I, I got the same clutch on my bike and it's like night and day, especially in some thick sand with a paddle tire or... or yeah, know. absolutely. I mean, that's actually where, it's funny you mentioned that because I actually tested this bike in a sand wash for the first ever break-in of it with the 15 front and 44 rear. Obviously, it has a different gearing combo on it because I was riding uh, tracks after a little while. Mm. So it's got a, just a stock 1449 on it. But uh, with a 1549 or 1544, uh, excuse me, uh, you actually have to shave the case a little bit to make it all fit, which I know some guys are probably cringing as I'm saying that, but it's just the way it goes. And obviously, I'll touch up a little bit better when the time comes, but... Um, I think as for modifications of what it needs is, I'll tell you what it needs specifically. It really needs updated suspension. The suspension on this, I don't care what anybody says, is god awful. It's, ter it's terrible. Uh, the front forks are just far too small. They're 47 or 46 or 47 mil KYBs. And I'm not entirely certain on the shock. I know it's a KYB model, but I don't know exactly what it is. Um, I do have a newer set of uh, Showa 48 mils, which are, far, far better than this stuff. I mean, they're off an 07 CRF 450. So that's you, you, were, you were saying that the 07 or the earlier CRF forks slip right into this uh, yeah, receiver here. Yeah, they actually will go right into this clamp, but I mean, for a different offset perhaps, I could just throw the pro circuits on. I think they're a 22. These are 24 offset. Are they? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, we could take the rake in a little bit and maybe make it turn a little bit better. I mean, most of the guys who are gonna watch us ride these and know that these turn like a German U-boat. So, I mean, anything to make it handle a little bit better <laughs> would be nice. Um, I, I took the stock pegs off, I put the IMS ones on. That was a huge, huge difference. Uh, my feet are able to stay on the bike without flying off. Uh, the steering stabilizer um, for high speeds. I mean, I, I did a dyno run on it in this sand wash I was saying earlier, I mean, I had the bike up to 109 miles an hour with the 1544 combo on it. And that thing, even with the suspension being as bad as it is, um, it, it stayed fairly straight. So I'm not complaining too much, but it could be better. So what would you say the top speed is gonna be uh, with the gearing that you're gonna have going into the race? Probably. I'd say right around top speed, probably between 109 and 112 miles an hour. So we, uh, we were talking on the phone the other night. Uh, we're gonna do some dyno testing. Uh, put the sniffer on it and see what it's doing under load um, and make sure that that is ready to go and it's going to make the race uh, no matter the conditions and when it's getting wrung out yeah. at, uh, at top speeds, which I'm sure it's going to be, a, <laughs> average it out, it's going to be a fast race. This thing I, is going to I think be average is right around 65 miles an hour, which is really fast. With stock gear, in the, you might grenade a bike out. Uh, oh, you would yeah. absolutely grenade a bike. I mean, it's going to be running hot. It's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna want to lean out. You gotta yeah. Look at this. All this stuff before you go out, or you're gonna get a DNF after you transport. You know, a team of guys and, and four riders. Yeah. Out uh, west coast is a big commitment, so we got to make sure that this thing's gonna be dialed in. For sure, right and uh, you know, I mean, you know, suspension, gearing, um, those are all significant things. And uh, another thing too that I really notice is when you're riding it at speed for a while. Um, and I, I'm, when I did this test in this sand wash, I keep mentioning it, but I noticed a few things when I did this. Um, your hands would go numb after like six or seven miles. Like I'm talking like you couldn't even feel the, the brake or the clutch lever. Um, and, and that's just because when you're at such a high speed, the bike, honestly, it, it gets a little upset. It doesn't like it too much because no motocross bike is meant to go triple digits. So, right, single cylinder, um, lots of... Yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on here. And, and when you really think about it, when you take all the plastics off, there's not much to these bikes. Right. You know, it's just, you basically, you got a motor, a carburetor, and, and a frame there. You know, I mean, there's no crazy electronics or anything. So they're fairly simple to work on, but um, to get it to be 100% is the tough part. So what are we going to do vibration-wise to, to combat that? Because it is a 500 and... Uh, it's going to vibrate no matter what. Um, so I, I know... Pastrana TP199 was talking about filling the bars with silicone on the RM Zilla that he rode at Straight Rhythm, the mm -hmm. uh, CR500 powered RMZ chassis. Um, 
it, anything with that potentially? I didn't even think about that, but I mean, we could do that. But I mean, my biggest one, and from what I was reading about the Team Green bikes, because they raced KX500s up until 05, right. you know, um, they would weight the cranks a bit differently. So that way they would, um, it's almost like adding a flywheel weight, but a bit different. It doesn't change the power curve as much as a flywheel weight would. But, okay. um, you know, when you add a bit more weight, it kind of reduces the vibration and it settles the bike down a bit, especially at speed. Interesting. So who's going to do that for you? I think I'm going to send it to Crankworks. Okay. And then uh, I'll have X-Pro right, right in town here. Uh, we'll just take it apart and we'll press a, a, a Wozner rod onto that. We'll just send them the rod yep. and everything and have them do it. It'll just be put on the stock crank. Um, I don't want to put a hot rods crank in it because me personally, I've had them grenade and I'm not a big fan of them. Yeah, I've been told uh, there were runs of the hot rod cranks that weren't as good. No. Then again, I, I have a bike that we put 30 hours on. Yeah, I mean, th they're hit or miss. I mean, I've had bikes you put 80 hours on a crank and the crank's fine. I've had bikes with 15 minutes on them and the crank locks up. Right. So, I mean, and, and these are all two strokes that I've put these cranks that I would never put one in a, in a four stroke. But, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, we'll probably put a, a Wozner piston in it, get the cylinder redone again just to have a fresh bore. Uh, maybe cut the head a little bit more, um, you know, run C12 in it and uh, just clean up everything, run everything OEM because nothing's, nothing's better than stock if you want it to be reliable. Right. So I know in our testing, as far as bar setup goes to combat that vibration, we went from the twin wall, uh, which is a reinforced bar, mm -hmm. to the fat bar, which you have here, which uh, helps a little bit. It's more free, free bending more bar. More flex, yeah. More bar flex and also the Mako uh, bar clamp, which was tremendous. Uh, I know you have the Scott's steering stabilizer on, on there. Maybe uh, Mako, we can give them a call and see, see the rubber isolated uh, bar mounts. These actually have rubber mounts in them. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, Andrew, I'm, I'm talking about uh, not only on the bottom, but oh, also- Oh, well, you mean also in the clamp itself. Yeah, it's, it's gotcha. big time. Mako makes a great product. And also, uh, Tom at, at Zero Resistance Throttle, uh, makes a roller bearing throttles, dude. I, I rec highly, highly recommend you pick up one of those. And, and not only does it make the controls silky smooth, um, but I actually think there's vibration resistance through the bearing of the throttle because it, it's not actually making contact with the bar. I, I think that there's makes something, sense. Something that makes sense. That's, that. Yeah, I think that's a pro taper one, which is really good. Yeah. It's got a nice cable on it. I put a brand new Motion Pro cable on it uh, before I left. And I got no complaints about the throttle, but I will back you on that statement where I think the. Um, the bearing throttle tube would definitely be a nice addition. You know? so, so I see you got the, the pro circuit pipe. We talked about you uh, potentially getting the exhaust manifold by Jason Meyer at MSV. That would be a, a good upgrade. For a stock port, uh, all the production pipes are very close uh, and the pro circuit has a, has a, uh, a nice range to it. Uh, this thing looks cherry. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the exhaust setup at all. Um, maybe an MSV exhaust flange. Yeah, I, I honestly, I like the way the power is with this pipe. I've actually tried the stock pipe and wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, it's funny too, because when I bought the bike, it came with the works pipe, which you cannot buy anymore. Is that uh, right? Yeah, I think they're discontinued. Um, and I picked up the silencer, but I almost think that the person who had this before might have wrapped this thing around a tree, because if you look over here, the, uh, the pipe was fairly new, but this case on this side is almost brand new. Mm. So I almost think someone wrecked it into a tree and crushed the water pump and, and maybe that outer case cover because the other side of the case is a little bit uh, dirtier and looks like it has a lot more time on it. Um, Either that or maybe the, uh, uh, that side of the case got eaten away. We see the water pumps rot on these after sitting for some, some time. That's another thing I want to talk about too, Potentially. actually. Potentially, yeah. What's the scoop with that? So we, we, we got to combat the heat. So. Okay. So I, le I learned this actually. I took this to Glamis and rode it out in the dunes for a little bit. And I noticed that it was really pushing a lot of uh, coolant through it. So I went back to the truck. I was like, all right, I don't want to blow the bike up. You know, I mean, you know, CR 500 cases are hard to come by and right. stuff like that. So got back to the truck, realized that it wasn't pushing a lot. It was just really dripping out slowly, but you know, that's never good. And I almost think too, that it needs an updated impeller. You know, as you were saying, I mean, th this thing's 20, what, 23, 24 years old. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's due for some significant internal modifications, and I think uh, the I think MSV makes an impeller. Right. Actually, so that's something I was going to look into. I tried to look into Boys and see if they made a super cooler kit, but unfortunately, they don't have one for this bike. So, have to look into further options. 
Definitely. And what did you do with the radiators? Because you talked about this, sending the radiators out to be uh, 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 built oversized as well as reinforced. And I see I'm a little bit jealous about, of this radiator kit here. Yeah, so that's, that's Brett from ICW. He's down in North Carolina. Um, that dude is, he does outstanding work. Honestly, they're, they're still stock size. They're not oversized. Okay. I really don't think you could oversize them much except for on this side, you know, because you have a little bit of room to play with. But, I mean, they're already fairly big enough for what they are. Um, I mean, they're just caged and braced. This kind of saves you from, you know, say you do crash. I mean, anybody knows, Hondas knows that these are like, you know, paper. They'll bend so, they're so thin they bend like crazy. Right. At least the CR250 and 125s do. Which is a DNF. If yeah, you which is, which is a desert. DNF, you know, because not a lot of people at a... 500 mile desert race are going to have a radiator for a CR500 on hand. Right. You know? So, I mean, there's that. I mean, we could talk about the brakes next. I mean, we do this. It's a, a. Definitely. You know, I see you got the, the, uh, the caliper bracket and the wave rotor. Uh, what's the scoop with this? So, the rotor is an EBC. It's a 280 mil. I think its stock is a 240. So, um, this is off a 03 CR250 as well as the relocation bracket, that blue piece. Mm. which is pretty cool. The uh, caliper itself and the line and the master cylinder are off of a Cannondale um, X440. Is that right? Yeah, so I did a supermoto conversion of one of those, which Kenny, Kenny has seen and ridden. Um, Sick and I, bike. Yeah, Sick. It, it actually runs too, which is surprising. But, um, you know, anyways, I, I had this, it was a brand new setup, and if anybody knows the older brakes and lines and stuff like that, I mean, you know that, the fluid just turns to mush after a while. So right. I basically just took this whole setup off the Cannondale and threw it right on here. And it's honestly, it stops. Eh, I can't really show you, but it stops on a dime. It stops really good. That's great. So we're going to leave the, the top end bone stock. There's no porting. It'll be refreshed. But uh, it, you, the thing I like about this most is that this is a bike that you guys bought from some kid in the city that was probably neglected in the top end, or I'm sorry, the, the lower end was still super tight. You still haven't rebuilt the, the it lower. It still has a stock crank. I would say the bike, it's probably right around the 60, 70 hour mark total time. Um, you know, I th I've thrown a skid plate on it since then. It's got a works connection, just glide plate, nothing crazy. The frame rails look good too. That's yeah. surprising. It's, it's never really, anytime I've ridden it, it's been at a sand pit, so there's not much damage you can really do besides just, you know, sandblasting everything. Right. Um, so, and I've heard this bike, it sounds super crisp. I know that, that you fly on it, you're starting to get comfortable on it. Um, so, how big is the tank on this bike, the IMS? It's, I think it's a 3.6 or 3.7 gallon. Um, stocks, I don't know, what, how big is the stock? Stock tank? is 3.6, so this must be bigger. No, there's no way it's 3.6. 3.6 is the stock tank. It's absolutely massive. All right. <laughs> well, I, then this is a little bit bigger then. Um, I think it'll do right around 60 to 70 miles on a tank, I hope. <laughs> so I guess we'll just have to see what happens. We're going to do a little bit of testing before we even do the race um, with BA suspension. He's got a nice whoop track where right. we can get some good speed uh, to test, you know, rebound and all that kind of shit. And then... Um, yeah, when you're on the main jet that long... Yeah, it burns fuel when you're on the main jet that long. It's it's going to burn through fuel. But you like want it rich though. Before. You want it rich you at the same time. You do want it rich too. Absolutely. You don't want it to yeah. grenade, you know. And I think actually too, another thing too, I sealed the airbox with silicone. Right. I took it all apart, every single piece, and uh, I took um, I think GE sells it. You can buy it right at Home Depot. It's uh, it's good for up to 400 degrees, and you'll never get that hot up in the airbox. But I uh, I just I took everything apart, sealed it all up. So I mean, that's you know another problem averted. I mean, you know, two strokes and air leaks are probably one of the worst things you could have. You'll lean out and blow up. Big time. Not only that, but you'll suck sand. We've had that issue with a lot of our race yeah, bikes. Just that's, the older that's air boxes, the main reason, too. They lose the seal. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. So whole intake's been serviced. Uh, we're going to dial in the jetting. It's going to get rebuilt top to bottom. We're talking about weight in the crank. Um, maybe a little exhaust mod with the exhaust flange. Um, any work to the radiators? Uh, or you know, run this setup here? I'll run this same exact setup. I'll run the same brake setup. I'll run the same plastic setup. Uh, I mean, I'll probably just throw numbers on it and hand guards. Hand guards are a big thing too. Right, um, right. I ha actually had a set of those old school UFO hand guards that bolt right into your lever. If that makes it, I think a few people know what sure. I'm talking about. I like Pastrana used to run them. Yeah. They were a Serbies ones, but uh, the UFO ones, they take up a little less space on the bars itself. And um, I like them bolt it into the lever because it actually covers your hand rather than sticking out from side to side. Right. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, it doesn't really need much more work. I'm gonna powder coat it before we uh, put it back together. I'll, you know, scotch bright the swing arm, scotch bright the pipe, and just clean it up. Um, I might throw a pipe guard on it. I don't know though. That wouldn't be a bad idea. You dent the pipe and probably just carry an extra. I have a few sets of wheels. I mean, definitely. You know, a couple air filters. Probably need a few gallons of fuel. Honestly, like a title sponsor would be sick, but yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we'll have to talk after the video. Here we'll we'll have to camera. talk afterwards, but yeah, definitely. So um, potentially some CRF forks, uh, maybe refresh no, the def shock. Definitely, some definitely CRF, CRF, definitely some CRF, some CRF forks. forks. So we, we talked about the, the the water pump mod. Basically everything we do for for the motocross bikes, except that that you know, of course, the gearing mod, which I know you did some testing. Yeah. Um, honestly. Uh, with stock gearing at Sand Mountain under load up a hill, you can't pull fourth or I'm sorry, fifth gear with the stock gearing. So uh, we're going to be looking for top speed and then having it be uh, at the right point in the rev range at that top speed, course, right? Which yeah. is which is big. That's why we got to test these things. These things start to tremor over 7,000. That's when they start to vibrate excessively and then that's start when you're losing off. bolts and uh, teeth and fillings and uh, definitely maybe some Loctite in the back pocket, huh? It's you know what's funny kit. is I've never really liked Loctite. I've always used either, I've never really had bolts fall out of this thing, as crazy as that sounds. Um, I use the Honda, the Honda Bond stuff. It's like Threadlock. Honda Bond, yeah. It's uh, the green one. That stuff is 10 times better than uh, Loctite because Loctite gets crusty, whereas the Honda Bond, it goes in wet and it'll lock right into the thread. So, I mean, that stuff is, oof. It's good stuff. It's the good stuff. Yeah, it's the good stuff. I know we, we did some red, red Loctite on uh, stuff like engine mounts and, and stuff like that. But hey, after you powder coat this frame, you're going to want to put probably. Yeah, I've heard that powder hours. coating it yeah. uh, definitely makes things loosen up. I'm not entirely sure why. So you haven't had any issues with bolts falling out of this thing? Never had. I've never even. I don't think I even put Loctite on the motor mount bolts. Are you serious? And they're not even loose. Huh. And I've had the engine out of the frame. Once you powder coat it, they'll get they'll come loose. They're they're going to come loose. Even uh, torqued to factory spec, they came loose at Daytona on you, Kenny. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Two laps into practice, and the first one was already backing out. <laughs> so it's uh. But this one, she's been worn in, and uh, everything is settled nicely, and no issues with 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 hardware. So yeah, man. You know, um, just a testament to the CR500, a bike with lots of time that Andrew bought secondhand. And now it's being prepped for a very serious desert race. We're going to have right. four uh, pro class uh, um, pro card holders go out and go to battle in the desert with this bike um, against against modern equipment as well. Yeah, I mean, HRC will be at this race. Uh, I know they do a lot of testing for Dakar. Okay. You know, they test their Dakar bikes out there. So, I mean, those, those bikes do it right around the same speed, I would think, probably right 110, 112 mm. miles an hour. Um, KTM will be there, Husky. I don't know if Yamaha does this race anymore. I don't think uh, Cowie does, but those three uh, manufacturers will definitely be there and we'll definitely be up against them in the same class on this bike that's over 20 years old. Dude, there were some kids who tried to do this last, uh, I think last year, and they had a 1542 on the bike. Yeah. And they only made it like a mile in and the bike grenaded. Are you serious? Yeah, so my goal, my goal is to make it past the mile mark. We make it past yeah. the mile, we win. <laughs> Set the bar low there? Or no? Set the bar really low. But no, I mean, if, you know, Timmy at X-Pro, he's a really good guy. The guys at Crankworks, they do all the cranks for the Star Yamaha team. I mean, wh why couldn't this bike finish that race? I mean, it was, it was basically made to do that. Look at the KX500, they raced it all up until the new 450 came out. I think they were running a 1642 on their Baja bikes back in the day, which is 120, 120 miles an hour, something like that. A friend of mine has Danny Hamill's bike, and uh, you know it has special cases just to make everything work. For the bigger, yep. bigger counter shaft sprocket. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and and we were actually talking. That's another thing too we could talk about. So. My friend Frankie Panino, he, him and I were talking about, you know, he wanted to be on the bike and on the team. And then he's like, you know what, man? He's like, fuck that. He's like, I got the Danny Hamill bike back at home. He's like, I'm going to race the Cowie against the Honda. And he's like, I'm going to get my own team of guys. And I'm like, dude, I like this. You know, this is like, we have our own race inside of the race. You know, we got to see who finishes first and stuff. So That's what's up. I dig it. You know, a little friendly competition on top of the already pretty, uh, you know, 
it's going to bring your game up even yeah, higher. Yeah, it'll bring, it'll bring the game up even higher. Yeah, you yeah. said it perfect, Bill. Um, but yeah, man, it's just, uh, just, it's something cool, man. Big time. It's just something cool. How many racers at, an, at that event, would you say? I don't know. If there's, I'd say there's probably hundreds, yeah. Hundreds of teams. Yeah. Hundreds of teams. Hundreds of teams. I think Billy knows a little bit more about it. I kind of been all randy about the idea and not really looked into it too much. But, you know, I will definitely do it. That doesn't mean I won't do it. But, um, you know, got to get, definitely get your equipment and source before you sign up for the race. That's not even a big deal to sign up. So you've got a lot of work to do. Uh, we're going to check back in with you. Guys, stay tuned on Andrew's journey to take this thing to the Vegas Torino. You know, if you start, if you do some testing at Ainsworth, hit me up. Maybe we'll go out and do some riding with you. That'd be sick. Yeah, some absolutely. Footage at the course, and uh, we'll follow the saga here of Andrew prepping the uh, the Bronx '97 CR <laughs> CR 500. Um, absolute workhorses of, of bikes here, monsters, monster torque, um, and I, I'm sure. I mean, in a straight line, this will give the new bikes a run for their money. So, oh, absolutely. I'm sure the factory bikes prepping for that event won't, won't have any more horsepower or torque. We can pretty much guarantee that. So set up properly. Uh, this is going to be a real weapon here, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys can do with it at, at uh, the Vegas Torino. So, Baco, thanks for bringing the thing down. I think now we're going to throw on the dyno. We'll talk about that. But thanks for watching, guys. Uh, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, we want to see some of you guys doing shit like this hey maybe we'll get a trailer going out and if a couple if a couple other guys want to race we'll bring bring some bikes and yeah stuff. i would so love we'll... to see a few guys on on big boards do it i feel like that'd be a pretty cool thing um haven't seen them out there in what 15 years probably I have to go on the more big bore addicts facebook page and see if anyone <laughs> put their money where their mouth is you know so let's see what's <laughs> up let's go bring it all right guys thanks for watching good uh i was about to say good luck bidding <laughs> god bless america no it's not for sale it's not, not for, for sale, sale. <laughs> Not for sale.